Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, uh, November the 18th, and this is Spy Outlook. I just came from Money Show, uh, and you can see that webcast at moneyshow.com if you so choose. It was a very, very good time, and got a, got to meet uh, a number of folks. Very glad to do that as well. Always like meeting the folks out there. I actually got asked by um, Money Show on the video webcast. You'll be able to see that also if you go to the video library of um, individuals on Money Show. I got asked the following question. How do you know when to take the trade at the pullback into the level? Many of us like to see that bounce and then we're there. But see, you, you've got to remember something. Although trading is very rigored, it is not a mechanical thing. It doesn't follow the rules of if then always. It does not. What you've got to do with every instance is look to the left and make sure there's not other work to be done. For instance, as SPY came into the 61.8, it held here a couple of days, but I did say, hey folks, we've got a gap fill event here, so the vacuum is going to suck it down to try and fill that gap. So rather than sticking right at the 61.8, where it might do in some other environment, because it's got that gap event, it's going to move through the gap. So you can't ever look at a fib and say, oh yeah, this is exactly where you take it. It's definitely going to bounce here. We have no idea. Just because something comes into a pullback doesn't mean we have to take it. We have to make sure that the business is being done that was set out to be done. And not until it's complete are we able to take a trade. So as we look to the charts today, what do we see? We're coming back in to the other gap that we came through, stopped right dead of it in this space. What do I think is going to happen here? Well, in the grand scheme of things, I do believe that the work here in the short order is done. It's filled both its gaps. It's come into the 61.8. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's come into the 61.8 and it's popping now. So what it's got to do is prove that all the sellers that we're sitting that would be sitting here that we have enough buying pressure to overpower them because there will be sellers sitting here assuming that this gap will not hold right a lot of the folks you know I did a, a something on Apple and somebody tweeted something about thanks for the doomsday event <laughs> it's like <laughs> sorry I'm just telling you what I'm seeing so for the person who's consistently bearish, who loves being bearish, is going to be waiting here to sell this event. And I don't believe that they're going to succeed. I believe that the chart is going to begin to press to the upside. We've got a flat 200, which implies that we'll either come up and meander or come all the way up in order to hit it, because a flat moving average will not stay flat if we continue downward. And so we're waiting for it to either turn or for the chart to move up into it or to meander around until it works that flat action off. Also, here's the daily 50 and here's the four hour 50. These are some very, very important things that I look at. I look at the 50 simple moving average, probably more than any moving average that I do look at. And the hyper extension or the, the accelerated distance away also tells me that there is some action that's going to be building from underneath. A lot of us are seeing this 61.8. A lot of us know that it's a traditional place to bounce. So a lot of us are going to be pressing to the long side. Pre-market this morning, we can see that the e-money, the e-minis are up, which they should be, right? Notice, um, the SMI turning up and some of my custom indicators are also turning up very, very nicely. And so what we're looking for is relative confirmation. And 
from a longer term event that could be something that starts right here. If we breach the gap, we will come to this area. No doubt about it. And if we hold this area, we're going to come back to the top of the gap. And that's going to be the next space that's going to be a decision zone, right? What do we do right here after we filled these regions? So today, as always, pay attention to the charts. Are the candlesticks giving you higher highs and higher lows? If so, you're moving in the right direction of the trade. Overall, we should begin a bounce. Where do we normally go if we fail this region? We'll normally come to the 38.2. If there's aggressive selling, we'll stop at the 50. But in this case, because of the gap, we may come to the top of the gap before rolling. All in all, uh, I'm of the mind that this bounce here into this region ought to give us a pretty good move. Now, I don't do the statistical references of the past, even though I am a, a trained statistician. I don't do that because uh, I don't really think they're valid because I think every time you look at the chart, there's something different, right? It's like the river that's never the same place twice, that sort of thing. So I don't know what the week of Thanksgiving normally gives us. Uh, for me, I think this week will be an up week. All right, but we'll see again for me, for me, as I trade, I'm going to be looking for higher highs and higher lows and the ability to hold levels once they get there in order to stay long. All right, good luck, everybody.